We continue our discussion of August Osage County by Tracy Letch, the American playwright. In this lecture, we discuss the themes of the play August Osage County. There are five important themes in this play, and the themes are the inheritance of trauma, patriarchy and American memory, addiction, violence, abuse, and power, familial responsibility, and entrapment. And of all the five themes, we discuss the first theme, that is the inheritance of trauma. August Osage County is fundamentally a story about the inheritance of trauma. As the extended Western clan comes together under one roof for the first time in years after the death of their patriarch, Beaverly, the relationships most keenly tested are those between parents and children. Through his examination of several fraught parent-child relationships under pressure, the playwright Tracy Let's suggests that behavior both benign and abusive and legacies both mundane and traumatic are inevitably passed on from one generation to the next. Tracy Let's examines the burden of inherited trauma through the relationship between Violet, the Western family matriarch, and her eldest daughter Barbara. Violet is a cruel woman, an addict who stumbles through her house in a haze, spewing vitriol at anyone who will listen. Violet's cruelty is eventually revealed to stem, at least in part, from her own mother's meanness. At one point, for example, Violet tells her daughters about her mother pulling a prank one Christmas, gifting Violet a pair of dirty Fessus skate work boots after she had asked for a pair of shiny cowboy boots. Ruminating on this story, Violet calls her mother a nasty, mean old lady and supposes she is the source of her own cruelty. Violet has clearly passed her pain on to her own three daughters, most of all to Barbara. After being home for only a few hours, Barbara begins picking a fight with her husband Bill about his infidelity. As Barbara insults Bill every chance she gets, Bill remarked that Violet really has a way of putting Barbara in attack mode. This quotation illustrates the effect Violet has on Barbara and the ways in which being home exasperates the baggage Barbara has inherited from her mother. Barbara also spars with her sisters Ivy and Karen and her own daughter Jean. Further providing herself to possess Violet's appreciation of a down and dirty battle of words. Through the relationship between Violet's sister Matty Faye and her son Little Charles, let's also demonstrate how parents' self loathing is inherited by their children. Matty Faye displays outside disdain towards little Charles throughout the play. The source of this cruelty is not revealed until Act 3 when Matty Frey suspects that little Charles and his supposed cousin Ivy are involved romantically and comes to Barbara with her suspicions. Barbara confirms Matty Frey's fears prompting Matty Faye to reveal the truth. Ivy and little Charles are cousins, but half-siblings. 
Lee Charles is Beverly's son from an affair with Matty Fay. As she confesses this, Matty Fay self-reflectively admits that she doesn't know why little Charles is such a disappointment to her. She wonders if she really just disapproved of him. She wonders if she is really just disappointed for him and has been hard on him as a result of a guilt over hiding such a secret. In this way, Matty Fay's pain has been passed down to her son. Though he doesn't know the truth of his parentage, he has had to bear the burden of his mother's ire for nearly four decades and has become insecure, introverted, and emotionally stunted as a result. Lily Charles has internalized the worst of his mother and built his entire identity around this sense of inadequacy. While Barbara and Beverly never appear together on stage, the echoes of their unique relationship reverberate throughout the play. Beverly passes down two things to his oldest daughter, his talent for writing and his inability to use that talent. Beverly came to prominence after the publication of his first book of poems, Meadow Lark, in 1960s. Through the play, never, though the play never delves into specifics, lets him that Barbara herself is a writer. Though the play never delves in specifics, let's hints that Barbara herself is a writer, and a failed one at that. While it tells Barbara that Beaverly always said his daughter had talent, this information shocks Barbara, who refuses to believe that her father would ever have said such a thing, or even if he had, that such a thing could be true. The fact that Beverly never told Barbara himself that he admired her writing reveals a disconnect between the two, but also suggests the inheritance of talent, whether it was passed down through genetics or through Barbara's active effort to be like or to impress her father is never revealed. Talent then is a different kind of trauma here. Beaverly's early success became a burden when he failed to produce a second book that helped up to his first, and the pain of failing as an artist is a legacy to which Barbara has, perhaps unwittingly become the heir. This connection between Beaverly and Barbara's artistic lives is symbolic of a deeper emotional connection between the two hinted at when Barbara and Jonah, Beaverly and Violet's housekeeper, convene in Beaverly's story in scene that mirrors the play's prologue. In the prologue, Beaverly offers Jonah the job of housekeeper and caretaker before launching into a half-drunken monologue about his disillusionment with his life, his writing, and his country. Later in the play, Barbara sits Jonah down in the study for a meeting. Barbara nurses a glass of whiskey, as her father did in the prologue, while waxing poetic about her father's disappointment in America, his family, and himself. After dismissing Jonah, Barbara pours herself some more whiskey, demonstrating that she may stand to inherit her father's alcoholism as well, and talks to herself circuitously mirroring his behavior twice over. Barbara, unaware of the manner in which Jonah was hired, unknowingly mimics Beaverly's actions, suggesting the patterns and behaviors she has inherited from him are not just copied as the writing career may be 
but transmitted genetically or spiritually. Trauma, talent, self-loathing and predispositions toward addiction make their way from generation to generation in a combination of genetics, behavioral influence and an element at least in the world of this play of fate. As the Western struggle to understand the traits their parents have thrust upon them and indeed the things they have forced willingly or not upon their own children let's highlight the inevitability of inheritance and all the burdens contained within it. With this we come to the end of uh, the discussion of the topic trauma in the play August Osage County and in the next video lecture we discuss patriarchy and American memory. Thank you very much.